that works our way of life in his daily life, which is his temple and religion. And then our minister in training, who will be ordained this spring, this coming spring, uh, Robert Roy Conklin, who is just an amazing musician, amazing consciousness, and every Sunday morning does his sacred service with such joy and energy as he sets up this room because until one of our multi-million dollar donors steps forward to get us a wonderful place uh, that is our own, we get to set up uh, ourselves and it's done through the love and the energy of those who know that we are making a difference and that this is a way of life that we can use every moment of our lives. It's why it's so valuable. And we have Catholics and Jews that come into our ministry and they say, this is a positive philosophy that allows me to be a better Catholic, a better Jew, a better whatever, better Methodist. So energetically, uh, it goes beyond religion to a place of sacredness and a place of knowing that our daily life is our temple and our religion. And so I'm going to have uh, Fleet Eason, who is our voc not only our vocal soloist, he's our music director. He creates for our December 11th anniversary party, he's creating all these beautiful, beautiful uh, energies, uh, local celebrities in the Palm Springs community to come in and share their gifts and their talents with us and practices our way of life at such a deep level. So let us welcome Fleet Easton, our musical director, who is going to share from the gay experience uh, in his spiritual life. Good morning, everyone. Well, first of all, I grew up in Akron, Ohio. I was born in Akron, Ohio, and it was the rubber capital of the world. So you know what it's like in the Midwest. Very conservative. And, you know, but as at a young age, I knew at three years old that I was different. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I was different than everybody else. And for myself, I never felt that it was an issue. I just lived my life like I thought I was supposed to live. But, you know, throughout your life, when you're trying to find who you are and, and discover where your place is in the world, things happen along the way. You know, I, like everyone else that has experienced what I have, they... I've gotten beat up, and I've had some other things that have happened to me in my life that I, I, I really don't want to share, but I'll tell you on a private level. But, uh, you know, we all have went through our struggles. And like I guess that's, I just, I never really felt that it was an issue. It was everybody else's issue. It wasn't my issue. Exactly. You know, I was just being who I was. I was just being who I was. And then, uh, I've always been on a spiritual journey. Uh, I grew up uh, in a family, not my direct family, but all of my uncles and my grandfathers, they were apostolics. So I know you know what that is, that's like Pentecostal. Uh, they're, you know, they call them the holy rollers and stuff like that. And you know, we respect and I honor all belief systems and I, they have the right to, to believe what they want to believe and I love my family. But you know, I knew at a young age that was not where I belonged. Uh, I remember at a uh, Sunday school on Sunday, and I was, I was sitting there, and the teacher said to me, uh, she had a picture of Jesus on the blackboard. And she said, don't you want to die and go to Jesus? I said, no, I want to stay here with my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought she meant right then, you know, like, no, I want to stay here with my mom Taking dad. a group now? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this, and, uh, but as, I, as I matured, you know, we all uh, become more wisdom as we mature. But I was always on a spiritual journey. You know, even through my 20s and my 30s, I always was exploring all different types of modalities of religions and picking up a little piece of it along the way, a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one, never knowing that there was actually a community that practices all of this. And then to come to Interfaith, which honors all paths to God, that way I, I get to express each one of them. Because before I moved here, as I have told many of you, on Friday nights I would go to temple, on Saturday I would go to the ashram, on Sunday morning, I sang at Unity, which is New Thought. And then Sunday night, I would go to Mass. 
So I was covering all my bases. <laughs> and, 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 you know, when you, here's how I feel. When you open yourself to all of that, there's something you can get from each thing. You don't have to accept everything that is given to you with each one of those belief systems. There, it all has an underlying current. It's all one thread. And you can pick the things that resonate with you. And so then when actually in, in, in 2000, how I came to my spirituality full, I was singing in nightclubs. And this lady that I was working with, she called me up one day and she said, our, our soloist has passed. We would like to offer you the job. Well, I knew nothing about unity. So I, I just, she said church. So I didn't know what that meant. And so I said, well, you know, I, I really don't sing those kind of songs. But uh, she says, well, we'll pay you this kind of money. And I said, okay, I can sing anything. <laughs> Well, little did I know that was my path opening up on my spirituality. Yes, yes. It guided me and, and brought me into unity. And then I started to grow, and then I started to hear my higher consciousness voice. So uh, now that I'm in my more mature years of my life, you know, you become peaceful with who you are. Yes. And things that were not, that were important at one time in your life, they're not important anymore. And you look back and you think, why did I have myself so worked up and so upset over things that were so trivial and unimportant? At the time, they seemed important. But in the long picture, you know, when you look back, it's like, this is not important. Beautiful. So I just want to say, you know, I, I'm on my journey still, and I've been very, very fortunate to work in this business, in show business. And I have had nothing but wonderful experiences working with people who are like-minded. Because, as you know, people like-minded are brought together. I've never had to deal with the stuff, like in Hollywood you hear all the things that go on. I've never had that experience with these people. I've, I've had nothing but a wonderful experience. So with that, I'm gonna say, you know what? My life right now is at the greatest place it is that it has ever been. And I know that God is preparing me now for something even greater yes. because this is the year that everything is being wiped away for the new to come in. And the, the gap in the cloud. Oh, oh yes. And I, I've been now, I've been, I'm been asked to do a play with Gavin McLeod and Joyce Bullifant and her husband, <laughs> Roger Perry. I'm in rehearsals. And last night was very, very special to me. When I was leaving, Gavin came over to me and he said, Fleet, he said, you are an amazing actor and an amazing talent. And he said, we are so thrilled to have you. Actually, and Joyce said, we are so grateful to have you in the show. So, thank you so much. on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame December 9th. And so we're all going to come out and support Fleet. I'm going to be do the, doing the Star Blessing, and I just feel it's a great day uh, energetically because your star is rising. Yes, it is. And now, uh, without further ado, we're going to have Rob Roy Conklin, who is a minister in training, who's going to share uh, with you about some of his amazing journey. If you'll come forward, please. And let's really acknowledge this man. This Hello, hello. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here on a Friday afternoon. I spent an afternoon with uh, Dr. Clayton Beaver, uh, Tony Bowles, and putting together a combination of meditations. And I had a, several uh, breakthroughs in my own mind. But what I want to share with you today is uh, some information that we shared uh, through our working together. And he turned to me and he said, uh, to those who are given much, much is expected. And <laughs> I agree, yes, in fact it is. And uh, uh, when I grew up, I too knew I was uh, um, uh, unique. I'm not gonna say different, I was unique. I had all these different talents and all these abilities and skills. And, 
uh, I excelled at them. I never asked for permission. Probably what I want to share with you most is that you don't ask to be successful. You take it. You don't ask permission. You take it. You grasp it. And if anybody's standing in your way, you go around them. You don't fight them. You go around them. Same thing with your sexuality. Somebody has a problem with your sexuality, it's their problem, not yours. You do not need to battle them. It has nothing to do with you. You move on, focus on your mission, your goal, your talents. Show the world what you can do. Offer your talents. Provide your sacred service wherever you are, whether it's in your church, your spiritual center, wherever you are. Give what you can give. Know your strength. Know who you are. Know this source. Know that your father would not have put you here in this circumstance without, without the ability to fend for yourself. You can find that within yourself. Keep looking. Don't let anybody distract you. Your goals are just that. Your goals. And as you achieve them, you will share more of your talents. And the more you share your talents, the more... Uh, gifts will come your way. So on this beautiful Palm Springs morning, I wish you well, and I want you to know that God is on your side. He would not have put you here in a circumstance to lose. This is a win-win situation for you, and please never forget it. Namaste. <laughs> Our one more share is Dr. Roger Babanek, who's been with us for 15 years, if you come forward, and he just wanted to say a few things. I thought uh, the person that's been here 15 years uh, on Gay Pride Sunday uh, gets to say a few words before we have Dr. Clayton come up and share. Thank you, Dr. Sharon. Welcome, everybody, and um, it's a pleasure to be here today, and it's a pleasure to be here for the last 15 years, because I've been here from the very beginning with Dr. Sharon, and uh, through thick and thin, um, through everything, uh, we're always here. We're here in support of each other. We're here in support of family, friends, uh, all of you. Um, we all go through our lives, trials and tribulations, and sometimes we need that extra support. Um, I recently have gone through my little trial in life and it's all about the heart energy the love that we share uh, within our community within our friends within our families within our lovers it's all those that energize us um, so on this gay pride sunday um, i'm also uh, retired from the uh, u.s navy and so i am a part of a brotherhood and sisterhood that not only this brotherhood and sisterhood here but our brothers and sisters extend beyond this room, beyond this city, in, into the world, uh, because we've touched lives all over the world our entire lives. It's about that heart connection that we have, that the, the soul connection that we make with others, that remember that, that gift of life that we shared with them. So also, um, our doctors, our nurses, I'm, I'm, I work for hospice, and I've worked at trauma center for many years, and so just the lives that are touched, it's about what's in our heart. It's about what we share from our heart, our love energy. And so having a recent situation of my own, with my own heart, um, I thank all of my family, my friends, my doctors, my nurses, my congregants here, that everybody, um, for being a part of my life, because you instill your energy, your love, and your just your good graces of being a part of this. And so I'm also, this weekend, uh, manning a booth for the Disabled American Veterans down at Palm Springs Pride. This is my second year I've done this. And it's such a blessing to be down there. Last night, there were, there were gay people, there were straight people, there were husbands, wives, little kids. It was almost like a street fair on, on Thursday night, except for it was a younger crowd. And it was kind of, it was, it was a lot of fun talking with everybody because that's what we do. We're all inclusive. So my hat's off to Dr. Sharon for being uh, a part of this community for 15 years. And we look forward to the next 15 years and then way beyond. So thank you for being